Hello everyone, my name is Sheffrey and welcome back for episode 37 of the Satisfactory series here on YouTube. In this video, it's all about our very first time with aluminum. 100 sheets, 100 casings, and 100 batteries is perfect to get us started in our final tier of the game. Lots of pipe work and some new materials to play with. I ended up having a bunch of fun this time around. Thank you for all the support and help with the series so far. Let's get to playing games. I can't believe we made it all the way to aluminum. We're in the final... I guess technically the final stage of the game, if you want to consider it that. Like I've said in, a, in the prior episodes, I don't know if we're actually going to get to be able to finish before the 1.0 release actually comes, but we're going to try and go as far as we can. So welcome back, guys, once again. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, first of all, thank you guys so much for hitting 500 subscribers on the channel. That really does mean a lot to me. Um, you guys keep coming back and supporting all the time and watching the videos. So, yeah, thank you guys so much. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to say that quite a bit. And, uh, you know, we're now we're working our way up towards a thousand. And I've, I've said it before. I think I've, it's been a little while since I mentioned it. When we do, or if, if and when we do hit a thousand subscribers, you guys will see me do my first live stream here on YouTube, which you guys will be able to get involved. We'll be, able to, we'll be building and playing a sort of Mario Kart style racetrack that we can all kind of goof around on together. Um, See, so yeah, I'm looking, looking forward to if and when that happens. So let's jump right into the action today. We are putting together our first little aluminum factory. It's going to output 100 aluminum sheets, which we're going to need for the um, Mark V belts. And I mean, uh, just a whole bunch of other stuff now in this final tier. This is basically just going to cover all our crafting. We're going to have 100 aluminum casings. And then we're also going to have 100 batteries, which will help us unlock and power our drones. So in order to get that, we are going to have to unlock the actual um, aeronautical engine. It's the one that actually gives you... So where is it? Sorry. Take a little look-see here. The aeronautical engineering, which gives you sulfur access to sulfuric acid, making batteries, you get drones and everything. So obviously I don't have these things yet. Um... And you could, you could set this factory up kind of my, there were two ways you can kind of go about doing this. You can set it all up and power it on without the battery stuff hooked up. And then you'd be able to bank away some, some aluminum things. Or since, or if you've been following along with the series, you can go to your awesome sink, pull out these almost 200 coupons. And we're going to go on into the awesome shop here. And we're going to go ahead and pick up the things we're going to need for unlocking the milestone here. So we're going to need uh, 200 aluminum casings. So there's one of those. We're going to need some aluminum sheets. Grab one of those. Actually, we're going to grab a couple of these because that way we can just make... Actually, should I... I should probably unlock Mark V belt. Uh, so I'll get back to that in a second. But So we also need um, the radio control units these comes in a stack of 50 so these are quite expensive but that's okay we have 198 tickets to use so it's going to cost a total of 10 tickets we have the 300 motors so we're going to grab the radio control units some um actually maybe we'll just grab we'll grab a couple extra of the all cloud aluminum sheets we'll grab some aluminum casings we'll go buy all take those into our I have fuel in here for some reason all right and now that'll allow us to unlock that uh Oh, I need to go grab some motors. So let me grab motors and we will unlock the aeronautical engineering. So first of all, I think I'm also going to need, so for this build I have planned, it actually uses quite a few um, alternate recipes. So ones we're going to be looking for is sloppy alumina, the all clad aluminum casing, which turns it to the same recipe as the aluminum sheets, and then the pure aluminum ingot recipe. Um, but now I already have the pure aluminum ingot recipe. I just need to get these sloppy alumina and the all cloud casing. So I'm going to go ahead and throw, oh, never mind. I'm going to go ahead and pick, I didn't realize one was already done. Um, I think turbo blend fuel is a really good one and I have the, I have them to spare. Yeah, let's go, let's grab turbo blend. I do, I'm considering doing turbo fuel at some point. Um, but we may we may just switch to uh to nuclear power 
All right, we got everything we're going to need. Let's load all these motors in here. The aluminum sheets, the casings, all the motors, everything, radio control units. And here we are. We're going to go and launch this pod. But first, before I do that, I'm just going to take a look at the Logistics Mark V. What do I need to unlock this? Okay, yeah, it's easy. Let's go ahead and unlock this as well. Like the same thing as before, you could power up this factory. So eventually this build is going to need Mark V belts to feed enough bauxite. Um, so you can go ahead and build this with just Mark IV belts and then upgrade it when it's done. Or if you get the extra points like me, you can go and buy some extra aluminum sheets. So let me go grab, I need to grab reinforced iron plates. Yeah, because I got lots of uh, encased beams on me. We grab reinforced iron plates and we'll go from there. All right, now I can just send this all as one. So we get logistics mark five going out and then. Milestone reached. Eh. Improved conveyor. Get out of the way. There we go. Wanted to be able to launch both at the same time because the pod's not going to be back for 15 minutes. There we go. All right, so that is. Mark five belts unlocked. Oh, that feels so good. So I'm going to grab just a couple extra um, aluminum sheets. How many do I have left? We got 200. I'm going to grab, I'm going to buy another, that's probably enough, but I'm going to grab another stack just in case. Um, and then we will head on over to where I have the platform pre-built ready to go. It is up here in the crater lake zone. Um, we did already basically, we had a road sticking out to about here. I just kind of built a ramp. This is a higher elevation than down here. So I built a ramp up into here and there's a platform over here ready to go. Uh, it's got numbers marked out if you're looking to follow along. Hopefully it's easy enough. I've got a little picture that I'll put on screen when we get over there for my terrible drawing skills that I tried to plan things out. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll grab some extra aluminum sheets. And I'll also go over just all the machines and everything we're going to need before we go. Alrighty, so for this build, you are going to need um, all your, your bunch of Mark, a variety of conveyor belts. Uh, unless you just want to use all Mark V, then you can more than more than welcome to do that. Now, we're also going to need five blenders. All right, sorry, there I just have brain fire there. Uh, we got five blenders, six assemblers, 20 smelters, 11 refineries, four water extractors, and four minor Mark IIs. And then two, and you don't need these. I just kind of like to use them for, for emergency and they kind of help give me peace of mind. Two industrial fluid buffers, one for water, one for the sulfuric acid. So I guess technically I also need to buy a few more things. I think it's for, I think it's for the blenders that takes the radio control units and the aluminum casings. So we're going to grab 250 more aluminum casings and another stack of radio control units. This gives me 200. So I'll grab two of those and one of these. All right, I'm here over at the platform that I built for putting this factory together on. I actually forgot that I that I pre-set up myself with some supplies over here for the aluminum factory. So it is going to be 100 aluminum sheets, 100 casings, and 100 batteries per minute. Um, that's no longer necessary because I end up buying those things. So here we are, I'll show you on the map over here, right above the Crater Lakes, where the copper is coming from down here we'll go over where all my materials are coming in from really quick so you know where to tap them so the copper is coming from down here this is a pure copper node it's getting i mean it's slightly wasted at the moment but it'll get well we'll add more to it later on probably end up making some copper powder from this one so there is the copper node down there i'm just running it up all the way along here here's where the road connects to the main highway this comes up through here Ran right up in between these rocks. I thought that was pretty cool. Copper's going to come up through the waterfall system here. And then we're going to run it up into the subfloor. I've got uh, my water extractor. My four water extractors are already down below. I forgot I left those here as, as well, as well as the miners. Um, so this platform is 12 uh, wide or long here. It is 32 along this way. And then 24 along the backside. 
and 24 along that back side as well. Let me just kind of get a little get up here for you. So if anyone's looking to copy that, there you go. You can take a little screenshot. I mean, the rest of it is kind of like just however you want to set it up. So the bauxite and the coppers back here in the red forest and the sulfur node that I'm using for the batteries is all the way over there. And we're just going to bring it along that little platform here. You could use like vehicles to clean this up a little more, but I'm just using all belts. But now I'll throw the picture on the screen of my awful drawing abilities. So you guys can take a look at how I was planning this out. Uh, there may be a better layout for how these things will come together, but I think this, uh, I think my original idea should work. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with our building. Let's go ahead and grab the rest of the stuff we need out of the storage bin and then we build. The very first thing we have on our to-do list is the bauxite coal, copper, and I forgot to add it in, but also the, the sulfur miner. So we have the actual miners. So we the first, whoa. I think he's clipped through my floor here. Um, first thing we're going to take care of to take it off the to-do list is we're actually going to run the belt lines for all of these miners to the rest of the factory. So we're going to bring these two along here. Sulfur come down there. Copper can come from down there. Um, the coal is 244.44 units per minute. So that's just a whole Mark III system. The bauxite, however, is 574.07. So that is a Mark V system, bringing it over to the um, factory. And then we're also going to need some Mark V belts, moving the a few of the other things. Copper is only coming in at 166 units per minute. So that is also a Mark III uh, system. And then the sulfur comes in at a 250 parts per minute. So also a Mark III system. Okay, just skipping ahead because I've connected up all the belts just well from the miners over to the actual factory now. Um, I'm just going to I'm just skipping ahead a little bit because I kind of want the focus of this build to be more on the actual factory itself. Um, for anyone who might be like me, this is a part of the game where things can get a little confusing. So hopefully that uh, or hopefully I'll be able to make this um, easy enough to follow along for anyone who needs to do so, um, or give you any tips if you're trying to figure out aluminum for yourself or batteries. Um, but yeah, that is, we can take the, the miners off the to-do list now because those are all done and ready to go. Um, I haven't actually hooked up. We don't actually have any power running over here yet. Um, I'll probably run power either. I mean, we're really not that far from the main hub. Um, like the main hubs just right here. Uh, so realistically, I have two options. I can run a power line. Actually, I can run a power line from here over to somewhere, but right, right here is where our, our quartz factory is. So we could run a power line down and just like run it down the mountain, or I can just run it across through the red forest here to over here. I mean, most of it, like I've got a good thing of power kind of running across this line of the map right here. So really anywhere that I can run my line to. Perfect. The sun is coming up. I just ended up uh, running power to my miners. I totally forgot. I actually have uh, power running up here or I had power running up here for the coal miner. That's just a little bit off in the distance there. You can't see it's not rendering in, but I just extended that power line all along here and hooked it up to all my miners. I've got all my stuff here ready to go down here on what's going to be the logistics floor we've got 574.07 uh, bauxite per minute 244.44 coal per minute over here is the sulfur coming in at 250 per minute and then the copper that comes in at 166.67 per minute so the other things we do have to bring up is the uh water um so my, my game plan here, because there's quite a bit of water flowing around to all the machines and a different uh, bits of liquid. So my my game plan is keep all the liquids on the top floor, uh, like on the main level here, and then can move all the like actual bits and pieces around down below. So I don't have to worry about uh, headlift or anything like that. Like once it's up here, it's up here. 
can use the other one for sulfuric acid. So we'll call this like our uh, fluid buffer room. Um, so essentially what I'm going to need to do is I did move, I'm going to take out, yeah, or sorry, I did take out the, the water extractors. I'm going to move them more closer to this side because the water is going to come up into this area and it's going to go into this industrial fluid buffer right here. And then when it comes out of here, I'm going to need it to split off one line of 330 and then another line of 100. So that is 430 water total. So we need four water extractors because I'm going to down, I prefer to down clock rather than overclock. So we're going to go four water extractors doing 430 water per minute. 430 water per minute so I have four doing uh 107.5 cubic meters per minute that is a total of 440 per minute I have them running all along here into one pump here which sends them up just to about I put the pumps in exactly where the head lift is so that's where the head lift from that pump gets you to so I had to put one more extra pump there and then we'll go upstairs I actually got the pipeline um, floor hole to work this time just took some moving some I had to reconnect it a couple times so now we bring it up to these this upper floor where it is filling up our industrial water storage so I'm letting all the water stuff get filled up and everything ready to go before we actually connect it into the rest of the factory and hopefully this will help um, with our actual water usage in this one because there's quite a bit of water flowing around from from machine to machine So yeah, hopefully this, uh, hopefully this all makes sense. If people are trying to follow along. If you're trying to copy exactly, I just kind of added in a, a random, off of a random spot. I started building um, some platforms out. I gave it a three by three hole for the for the water extractors to sit in. I think it looks really nice. Powered it up and she's ready to go. Okay, so that is the water pumps and the storage taken care of. Let's knock that one off the to-do list for today. So now we can actually get into the um, layout of all our machines as per uh, that lovely Microsoft Paint drawing we did <laughs> earlier. Um, so, it, and about right here, this area right here, I have this whole section technically right now dedicated to this, but it looks like I can probably fit more in here than I think I can. So right in this general area um, where the bauxite and the coal comes in is where you're going to need six refineries. And it's actually three refineries feeding into another three refineries because you have three refineries doing the sloppy alumina. And then we have another three refineries doing from there um, with the aluminum alumina solution it's going to put out. Um, sending into another three, three refineries mixed with coal make the aluminum scrap. So I did actually make a blueprint that I can probably use in this scenario. Um, it's under production. Three ref refineries with pipes. Okay, so I need to grab more steel pipes out of my storage. But yeah, I think I'm just going to use my, since there are two groups of three, I'll just use my blueprint. There we go. Using my blueprints, we got three refineries. Feeding into three. Well, I got to hook everything up still, but I got the pipes already hooked up for these bad boys. So these are going to get fed bauxite and water. And then these are going to get fed alumina solution and coal. So actually I can just feed you or maybe I'll do it from middle to middle. I'm just got to wait for the autosave to finish here. Let's go middle to middle. And then we'll make this a slop, uh, the alumina color. Kind of blends in with the concrete, but that's okay because eventually we'll have these floors in black. So there we go. So that'll be the alumina solution. So I did already get sloppy. I'm still doing research in the MAMS. The only one I'm still waiting for is the all clad casing. I did get the sloop, slop, sloopy. I did get the sloppy alumina, so I can go ahead and put that one in now. Alternate sloppy alumina. Oh, right now. Sorry, it's the other way around. Um, this is doing 
aluminum scrap. My bad. These are the sloppy alumina. There we go. Bauxite and water. So we're looking for a total output of 489 cubic per minute on the alumina solution. Um, so let's go 49 divided by 3. It's 163. So each of these needs to output 163. So copy that. Paste and paste. Nope, I'm incorrect on this. It's uh, 689. There we go. So it's actually 229.67 per minute on uh, all three of the refineries here. So let's copy that. We'll paste that in. And yeah, so not only does this flow into here, it also flows over to the blenders in the end making the batteries. But that, those will be over there, so that's okay. All right, so now I can put in the smelters that will actually make our aluminum ingots. So we're going to go to production. We're going to grab all our smelters here. This is where I need 13 smelters. So we can probably just do that across, like in a line across here. This should be plenty of space, I believe. I have 24, well, I don't have 24 spaces across here, but. So let's start from, say. Like right, you know, pretty, I've got a good amount of space to work with still. So we'll go, there we go. We got 13 uh, aluminum ingots um, smelters. I gave it a little three gap in between the, the refineries back here. So now I need five refineries doing my sulfuric acid. So I'll set those, I'll, I'll blue, I can blueprint one or a little bit of them. Let's say this would be like the far left side or far right side. I mean, let's go in to about there. That should give me enough room to put in two more. I think I, yeah, I put these in backwards, didn't I? There we go. We got five refineries. I just had to shift things over a little bit, but it's three in from here. And it's, well, technically almost three in from the back with the minus the pipes. So we got those five. Those will all do sulfuric acid for us. And then in front of them is going to be the groups of assemblers for the for the actual sheets and casings. So those are two, one group of four and one group of two. But they're getting fed by the same stuff. So Technically, I could just do it all in like a singular line. Maybe. Let's see. Can I fit six assemblers in a line here? Probably. We got lots. Oh, OK. Hopefully this is. Uh, hopefully this is all cloud casing. If it's not, I'm just going to reset it unless it's a good one. Fingers crossed. Ah. That's OK. We got something to play with. I'm actually going to grab this classic battery. I may use this in the future. Then we'll keep researching. Going for those all clad casings. Yeah, there we go. We got our six assemblers in. We got three spaces. Well, yeah, about three spaces off the front of the pipes from these. Um, so these are actually are actually not taking the sulfur. The sulfuric acid that comes out of here is going to get routed around them to where we're going to put the um, the blenders over here. Um, these are all actually going to get fed by these smelters here, and the copper that we still have yet to set up over here. So the copper is going to come in here and I'm just going to put uh, it's six smelters. I'm just going to do like a little smelter area right here. Um, but so it looks like I actually have a little bit more room than I thought I did because this whole section was actually just supposed to be for the five refineries. But obviously I misjudged how big it was. So we are we actually fit the refineries and the assemblers all right here, leaving all this room or the blenders. Now the blenders are pretty big, but I should be able to do this. So we need five blenders total, right? So yeah, they're, they're pretty large, but I think I should be able to do it. So we'll go, how do you, how do you feed them? Okay. Looks so let's go, let's feed them like, let's send them all down like this. So we'll go, how much space do they take up? Uh, like two and a two and a third. 
ish. I'm gonna like center it. Yeah, there we go. So we'll start from the two corner dots. So we'll go one, two, three, four. Oh, I need blenders. My bad. Or motors, I mean. Five. Man, blenders look real cool. Yeah, I, I, I really want to see what they're like working animation looks like. I've seen a lot of people that just bury it and they only see this top part, but like there's got to be so much action going on this whole machine. It's going to be cool. So we've got refineries over there for bauxite and coal. We've got our smelters here for our aluminum ingots. We've got our refineries here for our sulfuric acid. We've got our assemblers here for our casings and sheets that we're still trying to get the casing recipe. We got our blenders here for our batteries. And then we need our six copper smelters over here. Since we got a lot of space to work with, maybe I, do I keep them in a group of six? Got a lot of room to work with here. I could always just do them in like a line. There, because I had so much free room to work with, I actually end up like spreading them out by like quite a, so they're in the middle of each um, foundation. So it takes up six foundations wide. But I mean, why not? I, that's all the, that's all the machines I had to place. We got our, I guess, our bauxite coal refineries. Smelters doing the ingots, refineries doing the acid, assemblers doing the casings and sheets, these doing the batteries, and these are smelting my cut these the, all they need to do is smelt copper ingots, so that's the layout of the whole factory. Now we can actually start hooking everything together and putting in the proper numbers for everything. So yeah, some of this alumina solution is gonna have to be ran. I'll probably run it back behind everything here. We're not like down in a loop. Like I was saying, I want to keep all the liquids up above here. We'll run it down. We'll loop it around back to here. So we need 200 going down this way. And then the 489 going the other way. So it was 689 total. And we'll start with uh, hooking up all our mergers and splitters and everything. We'll start with the easiest part. This this copper smelter line over here. So I'm going to... It looks like copper comes in from here. So I might as well just pop it up from down below right here. Bring our splitters down along the line here. Oh, that's... I was like, wait a second. That smelter is not where it should be. There we go. Uh, so yeah, this is just a Mark Three belt as a... Sorry, my brain stopped working there. This is a Mark Three belt as a, as a manifold line. And then you got Mark 1 conveyor belts feeding into all your copper smelters. Let's go ahead and set this to be copper ingot. We'll go um, 166.67 divided by 6. So 166.67 divided by 6. We go copy. Twenty-seven point seven eight per minute. Copy, paste. If I find it starts to work weird, then I'll just end up uh, down clocking like one or two machines to make it run properly. There we go. We got copper coming up, and it'll start feeding into these refineries that will not do anything yet. Now let's just hook them up, hook them up to power anyway, and so they can get backed up. We'll back. We'll back up as much stuff as we can in this in this system. Never mind. I'm not gonna worry about. It. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep myself focused. I could, in the matter of keep myself focused, I also forgot we need to put mergers on the end of this line. So let's get our mergers. Doesn't really matter where we send it because it's just going back downstairs anyway. Um, but it has to go over to these assemblers over here. So either way, let's just send it. I don't know. Send it down from like here. And then we'll send this one to the left, this one to the left, and the other ones go to the right. So you get your Mark 1 conveyor belts coming out of these. They put out slightly less than 30, but just barely. So we'll calculate it like it is 30. You'll say 30 goes into here, makes 60. So you switch to Mark 2 conveyor belt between these ones. These ones can stay Mark 1s. 
And at 166, you need a Mark III coming out in total. So let's put in our conveyor hole. Our conveyor lift. Just Mark III. Wait, did I do that wrong? Yes. I was going to say, I think that's facing the wrong way. There we go. All clad casing. There we go. We finally got it. Wasn't too bad. Let's research another one. Why not? See what else we can get. So before I forget, it's actually going to be water that comes out of these refineries. So I'm going to go ahead and dye or color these blue to help remind myself. And it is water that feeds in here. So when it comes out of here, like when the water comes out from this storage is where it's eventually going to hit a splitter. I'm going to bring it. I'm going to start bringing it out this way. Run it along, along the back here. So I need to go grab some more plastic because I don't think I have any more in the storage. Um, and then I'll be able to, because I'm going to need quite a few Mark II pipes running through here, I think. So So for the water line, essentially how this is going to work is it's going to come out of here and it needs, some of it needs to feed here. And the rest of it actually needs to go feed over where the sulfuric acid is going to get made. So I'm going to put the splitter line or the pipe junction right here. Connect those up. Connect these up. I wonder if I can make it nice and nice and clean. Probably not. Good enough. And the other one, come out of here. What do those line up with? Just behind. Okay, so let's go. I think it's like right there. Move it if I have to. Yeah, it's that's wrong. Yeah, I'll just run this line over and then I'll be able to line up with it better. We're probably going to need some more sheets. Those I have, so that's okay. Alright, so that is the water line. These can all get colored accordingly. Oops, definitely just died a piece of concrete there. So it's actually already filling up, which is nice. This will help us out going down the, going into the future. This is sulfuric acid. There we go. Sulfuric acid goes there. If you really wanted to like go to like be really careful with the balancing. You could probably put in a uh, like liquid storage buffer here. In fact, I'm going to do that. Just in case. This is probably highly unnecessary, but this is like a just in case moment type thing. There we go. Just in case. I don't, like I said, I don't think this is, uh, this one's necessary at all, but you know, I'd rather, I'd rather have the extra. I'm just going to pipe, or I'm just going to use floor holes to get everything in from down below here. So these take 191 bauxite per minute. So that is going to need to be a Mark III lift. Feeding into the machines. And then they output just liquid. Okay. These take in coal. Oh, autosave. These take in coal, so we're going to have input holes for these. Come on, autosave. I believe in you. There we go. So input holes for these. That's where the coal is going to feed in. Needs 120, so that's a Mark II. That's a full Mark II lift right there. Perfect. Then these are outputting water 
and aluminum, 360 aluminum scrap in it. Wow, that's a lot. That's also definitely not how much they actually need to be outputting. It's uh, 733.33 divided by 3. 244.44 per minute. All right, copy that. Paste. So 244, that brings us down to a Mark III lift. Oh, I didn't need to put the holes in first. There we go. So those are those refineries taken care of. I mean, they don't have their actual inputs and outputs taken care of, but those are, that's the upper floor done. Okay, there, I didn't, sorry, I didn't realize the recording actually stopped, but luckily I caught it before I did anything too major. Uh, I think all that we just kind of lost there was I hooked the sulfur, or not the, so the aluminum solution runs from through a pipeline along here into a fluid buffer. And then I hooked it up into the blenders for the batteries. So that's all hooked up down through there. And then I was where this is where it's, I stopped where I was like, Oh, it's not recording. Uh, I hooked up the sulfuric acid outputs into a fluid buffer as well. And then I hooked those into the, the battery mixers. The sulfuric acids are clocked all to hundred percent. Um, I believe the same goes for the actual, yeah, same goes for the batteries. Um, so I'm actually just kind of color coding everything right now. So I don't forget what everything actually is. We're making all this yellow for sulfuric acid. So those are the liquids done for the actual, um, I don't think I'm going to need a, um, a pump here. I may put one in just in the odd, but like as long as it's full, it should be no problem going that like, it's not even a huge head lift. So we've got the liquids all hooked up to feed the batteries now. Um, I just have to do the few, um, or I just got to do the manifold line for all our smelters here, the manifolds for our assemblers. And then we're going to feed the hard materials or solid materials into the blenders for the batteries. And we'll be pretty much close to finishing it off. And firing it up, I think. All right, so one thing I did just realize is the water output from the Illumina scrap machines actually gets put back into the line with the rest of it here. So I think this is where I'm going to want to put probably a valve to make sure the water, when it's coming down this way, it doesn't actually flow into here. I want to make sure all this water is flowing outwards. So we're just going to pop a valve on there. And it doesn't, it doesn't really matter the flow rate. The main thing is that I just want all the water to be flowing out of here into, into the rest of here. It looks like the same thing is actually going to happen. So there's actually a water output from the batteries. It's batteries and water. So the same thing happens. We're going to take all the water that comes out of here and we're going to, we're going to inject it back into the line with the rest of it. So let's start setting up our output for the blenders here. Make sure all our water lines are all connected back into each other. This is going to be a total of a hundred and something water. So it can all just be Mark one pipes through here. Connect all of your machines. Color these accordingly afterwards. If you guys have any better ideas for how this could have been laid out? Let me know. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Or you can just tell me how much you love this episode. This is your best, your favorite episode of all time. Actually, I think I can do this. And then we'll just have to put like a walk. If you wanted to get to the liquid storage, you just have to use a walkway. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now we can go ahead and put a junction right here. And hook this line right in there. I'm gonna get rid of this um, pipeline support that's in the middle there. There we go. We're gonna do the same thing here where I put a valve right on the front here. That's just gonna make sure all the water is flowing away from this pipeline, not into it. 
Let's mark all these for water. There we go. That is all the water in this entire build dealt with. This is why I wanted to keep all the pipes up on the first floor because the pipes are kind of mix match together. But I think this actually looks really good. Nice and clean. Everyone's got nice, nice clean bends except for over right here. I could fix that, I think. And in fact, I will because everything else is so perfect. I want this to be matching. There we go. Everyone's got 90 degrees. There's all our water. That's our alumina solution sent around. That's our uh, sulfuric acid being sent around. So I think now we're basically just down to more of the solid items. So for the ingots here, because we now have the Mark V conveyor belts, this can actually be one just giant um, splitter line. That's going to get fed probably... Where's it going to come? It's going to come out... Comes out over here, right? Yeah, okay. So let's say... This one. Because it's right in the middle. So this one we're going to turn. And then the rest, do you want to go... What? <laughs> that was not English. The rest we're going to turn so the input's coming from the left-hand side of where I'm facing right now. Sound like a tape rewinding just now. So grabbing our Mark V conveyor belts to feed all this all these shenanigans here. Except for that one to the left I just did, that I'm pretty sure doesn't have to be a Mark V conveyor belt. There we go. Mark V's all the way down, because we got 700 something items moving through here. 733.33. There we go. This is going to just be a Mark 1. So Mark 1 conveyors actually feed all your uh, smelters here because they're only taking in 60. I need to grab iron plates. Iron plates acquired. Back to belting. So Mark 1 conveyor belts feeding all your machines here. Oh wait, these need to be slightly adjusted, don't they? Yeah, so they only output... Uh, 266.67 plus, uh, so 366.67, so 366.67 divided by 13. Copy. Paste. There we go. Copy the settings, uh, 282.21, 94.033333%. .03 Paste that on everybody here. Here we go. And so now these technically don't have to go back downstairs. These I'm just going to feed. They just go right into these assemblers here. So I'll just keep this all in the upper floor since we got space up here anyway. So we're going to grab a merger that'll hopefully work from here somewhere. Maybe like, uh, Maybe like right here. And then I'll just send this one to the left, this one forwards, and these ones all to the right. Hopefully this is easy to see if you guys are building along with me. Yeah, Mark 1 conveyor belt's coming out, right? Like that. I have the rest of the mergers here. So these ones, I want to turn and send them to the left here. All your Mark 1 conveyor belts. Getting a little faster. But yeah, this is where I'm definitely going to be adding um, the blueprints in the future. 
because this would be this would be too much going forward. At least these factories are somewhat smaller. A lot easier to handle. So for this, we got an output of look we'll call it 30. So we have 60, 90, so coming out of here is mark two. That's 120. Then we're switching to Mark III conveyor belts. Actually, yeah, it's just Mark III conveyor belts until you hit the, the smelter here. Then we're back to Mark one. Mark one, you got 60. You got 90. 120. Mark three conveyor belt into that one. And so what did I say this was total 366.67. So we got a Mark four conveyor belt. Now we need our splitters put in here. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Mark one feeds the machines. With the Mark IV as your, uh, why do I always forget that word? Manifold line. Every time. One day I'm going to remember. So now that we actually got the recipe, we can put these in. The alternate, all clad, aluminum casing. So these are going to be two. And the other four are going to be aluminum sheets. So the sheets, I want a total of 100 between all four. So each of these is actually going to get down clock to do 25 per minute. So auto saves clicks in. I'm going to take a drink and we'll paste these across all four machines. Okay, now for the casings, I'm actually going to want to output 200 split between the two so we're gonna want to output 100 from each machine because 100 is used for crafting and the other 100 goes sent over into the the batteries here so might as well keep them separated we'll do like that uh these can actually come together We'll put that out off the side here. And then we'll do mergers. Sending them all to the right. I think it's just Mark 1 conveyor belts. Coming in. Yeah, Mark 1 conveyor belts because 25 each. Sorry, it's Mark 2 conveyor belt between this machine. Which means we'll need the Mark II conveyor lift. And there we go. These ones, I also need the Mark II conveyor lift. So we're going to put those in. So we're keeping these separated. You have Mark II conveyor belts coming out of these machines. Not too often you have more than Mark I conveyor belt coming in or out of a machine. So let's go ahead and put some floor holes on one of the inputs or the blenders here. And these are going to be, oops, mark one conveyor lifts because they're only taking 20 per minute. All right. That is everybody on the main floor connected and down clocked to everyone or, or everyone who needed to be down clocked is great I can actually take away this um, storage buffer turns out it was unnecessary we 
get our industrial flu buffer for the uh, sulfuric acid. We get the industrial buffer for the alumina solution. And then we have the industrial buffer. We have two industrial buffers for water, mainly just safety reasons. But again, I don't think this one's actually necessary. But I actually don't think any of them are really necessary. But they just they give me a peace of mind and they're not very expensive. They don't really take up a lot of space either. They do look kind of cool. I might move this one like up ahead a little bit just so it's not like squished in back there. But uh, yeah, now we're going to go to the bottom floor and we can connect up all the belts that need to be hooked up and then we can actually do the power for this factory. So coming down here, let's start with, since this is right here, this is going to have to be a, a manifold line feeding these refineries from down below with all these sulfur here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just put a temporary lift here. Oh, we don't have industrial beams. So I'll have to use a different one. Just use Mark 3s for now. This is just so I know where to put my splitters. So it actually just all clips in together. So it looks like they're going to go right on the line here. Perfect. So lining up with each of the holes and on this line here, we're going to put in our splitters. So just find the green line and visually we're just going to line it up with these here. Now these can be Mark 1 lifts, I believe. Yes. So we're going to Mark 1 lifts. Connected into all these splitters. Did I do that right? Yes, I did. Okay. Confused myself for a second there. And then we're going to go ahead and take this conveyor belt mark three here I'm gonna turn it so it feeds down through here there we go that's the mark three conveyor belt for the sulfur completed who's next let's go bauxite this one's pretty easy this is just a manifold line of three how much bauxite are you hauling in per minute. That's a Mark three. So we're going to go the Mark threes. I think this is on the same. These are in the middle, right? Yeah. So if it's in the middle, it goes on the middle line here. So for these splitters for the bauxite, we're going to put our first one right here. Sending input like that. Then to the left, line those up. Grab our Mark V conveyor belt. God, it feels good to use those finally. I'm gonna turn it to over here. I'll move that sign in a minute. Feed those like that. And then what did I say? Mark III conveyor belt's coming down. Those are feeding all our bauxite. And now for the coal, the coal goes in behind, doesn't it? Coal goes over here. Yeah. So coal goes, should have done this the other way. Should have done coal in the back. So it could have gone around the back, but that's okay. That'll still be fine. So I'll send coal around like this. So we're going to kind of keep it out of the way for the most part. And then I'll just line it up with this hole over here when it comes to time two. I'm going to go boop, boop. Because that should be uh, where the hole is. Okay, so this is the coal. So this is going to be Mark II conveyor lifts. Let's put on our splitters first. So the first splitter put right here on the center line input coming from where I'm standing right now. We'll turn these ones. Give it the Mark III conveyor belt. And what is it? 80 coal per minute. So that's going to be a Mark II lift. It's starting to actually get into the numbers where we're feeding things, feeding things or taking outputs that are higher than 60. I was like, huh? 
There we go. Now I was going to say, no, that's not clipped in, but it is now. There we go. So that is the coal feeding into those machines. We got bauxite feeding into here. Now I need the output of this one, which is the uh, alumina scrap, which all come out at two. Is that 240? OK, so that's going to be a mark three. Just barely. So these are actually going to be mergers that I want. So I'm going to send them all down facing this way. I don't even know that I was going to say. That's not lined up. <laughs> I just randomly put that down. There we go. That's in the right spot now. Two. And three. Mark three lifts coming down. You're going to come into these mergers. So it's two, four. So this one going to be a mark three because it's just coming from the one so far. Then it's going to be mark. Wait. Can it be mark four? Oh, uh, just just missed Mark Four. So yeah, it's got to go from Mark Three immediately to Mark Five, and then stays at Mark Five as it hauls everything over to the batteries. So you can take everything over to the batteries. They're going to get uh, connected here in a second. So these, these are actually off center by one. So for these ones, I actually want to be, instead of on the center line, I want to be over by one. So like that, I think. Let's find out. Let's do a tester first. Before I put it all in and get really sad. Okay, perfect. So let's slide these ones in. I actually don't remember what the lifts for these need to be. I think it's... Did this need to be a Mark V conveyor lift? 40 aluminum... Oh, wait. No, sorry. It's... Uh, oh, wait. No. This is not... This is not what this is. Sorry. My bad. This line actually gets... This line feeds that giant line I was just making. Which is back... Where's the input for it? Is this the input? No. I don't have one, that's why. Where did I say it was going to be? Right here. This is a Mark V conveyor lift. I don't know if I, I don't know what my brain was doing there. It's like, yeah, you gotta take this away from it. No. <laughs> it was right here. Actually, I could just do like that. I think it'll clip in super clean. Maybe. Nice. Okay, so it's, uh, it's because I don't think I did that. Okay, that's why I was like, I'm all confused now. Um, okay, so it is one of these that actually gets fed over here. My bad. Now we're on top of it, guys. So you come this way on your Mark II conveyor belt. Back by two. So we got a Mark II conveyor belt coming down the line. Then we got our nice little Mark I lifts. Because I'm not, I finally learned my lesson and figured out where things were supposed to go. Oops, I missed one. Yeah, I missed one. Oh, 
Oh, I need more reinforced iron plates. It's almost like I have a storage with them in here. Yoink. Okay, so we got Mark II conveyor belt, Mark I lift. Not gonna lie, this this seems a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. I thought this was gonna be way harder than it seems like it is. Um, but anyway, this so this is an output right here. I think I'm actually gonna move this because I don't like where it ended up being. It's literally right over top of where I where I dropped that other one over. So let's actually just send it out forwards. That's not the right spot either. There we go. That's not right, is it? Nope. Mark two. Uh, okay, so now we can put the hole on here. The mark two lift. There we go. That's better. Okay, get that. That's an output. Okay, and I still gotta do. Well, I technically, I still gotta do the output of these as well. So we're gonna slap all those in there. These are for our batteries. Obviously, these can be a Mark One because not putting out a whole lot. Everyone puts out twenty. Alright, so that's an output of something I you like that's an item of that's the casings, that's the sheets. And whatever I build here for combining these together be the batteries. And then I still need to get this copper from here all the way over to here. Cause I haven't actually done the input line for these yet. Let's put those in now too far might be too far okay back down here for the batteries I'm gonna send them hmm I kind of want a drone port to send the batteries away so all right I suppose I can always just I'll just drive them from here to uh to I'll build a drone port somewhere else not on this actual building so let's just send them to the right because I'll have the truck station over here so this one is also off center. So this one has to go in here. I think that's right. Yeah. So we're going to bring this all the way down the line. Make sure these are lined up with the things above us. Here we go. So mark one lifts into those. These are just little, little baby numbers. It's gonna be so cool to see batteries flying through it. Like these are all things that I've never even touched or even seen in the game before. So I mean, I've seen other people do them, but never me. So that's 40. Oops. That's 60 coming out of here. It'd be 80 into a hundo. So for the copper, I'm gonna grab a Mark three lift. I'm gonna bring it down like that. I'm gonna send it in between the line here. I'm going to go like this, right down the middle. There we go. So this will allow me to squeeze it in between the output of the batteries and where the casings are moving along and as well, the output from here. So I'm going to bring it to right about there. I'm just about halfway through the middle. And that's going to be our copper moving through here. So I don't actually have the manifold. Let's set up the manifold line really quick. These one, oh, these ones are, these ones are right on this line. So I think that means these actually go here, like in this middle part. So I'm gonna try like that. Then we're gonna bring it along. These are the inputs for the casings. 
And they can be Mark 1 lifts going into them. So we're going to find out if I lined it up correctly. I did. Perfect. I'm missing iron plates again. I don't think I have any left. I may have to go home. All right. I'll be right back. All right. I'm back. I grabbed like a thousand iron plates. So there should be no more problems. No more going home again. Not until this build is fired up and completed. After we finish up hooking up these belts, we can jump into our power montage. We got a Mark III conveyor belt coming into here. Just like that. And that'll feed down the line as, they are, as our manifold. Look at that. I actually remembered the, the word this time. So then we've got sheets coming out, or sorry, wait, yeah, okay, Sheet, sheets come out of here, so we'll have to kind of finagle her in here somewhere. So sheets come out of there, casings come out of here. So for this one, I'm just going to, I'll leave it up a little bit. Actually, yeah, let's just bring a... Uh, Let's bring the, the aluminum sheets along the ceiling. Why not? All right, there we go. I got my three outputs right here. We got our batteries. This will be our, uh, all, this will be our casings and this will be our sheets. Um, and I'm just going to throw them all into a sink for now. I mean, I don't know. It's crazy to keep just sinking everything for now, but, um, until I actually get a proper, um, truck line and everything set up over here and we'll have to throw together like a little I want to put together maybe off the side here just a little drone port and I get maybe it should technically be a little further away if I'm, if I'm being honest but uh yeah the idea was to have a drone port here so that the batteries could just be flown around to wherever they need to be um which is probably gonna it's probably just gonna fly from here to like a central hub that then flies the batteries to where they need to be there we go. Everyone is getting fed into a sink for now. It's probably giving me a buttload of points, but that's fine. Um, so now we're going to jump into the power montage. We've already brought power over here. We just need to hook up all our, whatever you want to call it, the power frames. And uh, we'll go from there. So let's jump into that. Throw on a little bit of music. Throw on a little, we'll speed it up a little bit. And then we'll be able to finally turn this factory on. I'm quite excited. This looks really cool. fastest power montage ever everything is now already hooked up uh we got power where did my power originally come from that'll tell me where i need to hook everything up into i think it's this line right here so if i can hook this up to right here i think that should power up the entire factory figure it out, figure it out in three two one boom that's everything turned on on Maybe? No? Nope, it's just these. <laughs> uh, 
uh, well, I mean, I mean, those can still be connected in, but, um, okay, so where is, oh, it must be this one. This temporary connection right here should fire on the whole factory. Three, two, one. Hey, there we go. Okay. So now items should be flowing in. I think not 100% sure how well this is going to go. Cross our fingers and hope for the best. Seems like it's working so far. These guys take so much water. These take almost 200 water per minute by their own, on their own. So this is where I think things get a little complicated in the water line that I've done, like manifold line, because some of this stuff requires the output of everything to feed the water back in. But I think that's where having this um, flu buffer will help. But it is, it is full right now. So yeah, there's, there's no water coming out of the batteries just yet because there's no batteries being made. There will be soon. But hopefully the water, like the water from the batteries is like, I think the least important in the whole line. And that's where the flu buffer, I think helps. So it looks like we're doing okay so far. Coal has stopped moving. Why is this idle? What's not outputting? The water. Why is the water not out outputting? This valve causing me issues. It was. Why? What? <laughs> Alright, let's put a pump in here instead then. Valves are weird, man. I feel I feel like I get problems with them that other people don't. All right, I officially have everything balanced out. I'm impressed with myself, actually. Um, so the one only issue I was having was that the water outputs from these three refineries and the batteries wasn't working properly because I was trying to put too many too much fluid into one Mark II pipe. So what I ended up doing was I got the one Mark II pipe coming from down below. And then these three machine, like these machines that feed back into the loop actually come together by themselves so that they can fit in the Mark II pipe. And then it all combines into this, this splitter here, which is, which splits it then off into um, what it needs to. So I have some going into here and then the rest is going to this fluid. Hopefully it's just probably super confusing, but hopefully it makes sense. Any sort of extras? Are just gonna buy. I don't know if this makes any sense, but it seems to have helped balance out my water here. And then you come down to the um, sulfuric acid. It says it's not balanced. It's just because I haven't let it have it. I haven't had it running long enough in balance. And the other problem I ran into was I had placed 14 smelters when I needed 13. So I was actually outputting a few too many and taking in a few too many of the aluminum scrap, but now everything is balanced out. So hopefully if you guys need to follow along, this makes a lot more sense. We'll do a quick little recap. We have our five refineries here doing our sulfuric acid feeding into the blenders for the batteries. We've got these assemblers here all doing the aluminum sheets, which is feeding what are these feeding? Oh yeah, these are these are for me. These are for my crafting purposes. Um, these ones, these are for crafting crafting purposes as well. And then the or one of them is, and then the other one feeds the rest to the battery blenders here. I think this is where I was trying to make it a little bit too. Like I thought I was getting a little, it's because on my reference sheet, there's a lot of blue things crossing back over each other, 
just the water pipes because you got machines feeding back into the loop to recycle the water. However, I believe, like I said, I think, oh, something's wrong. I see a yellow. What's wrong with you? Not getting enough copper. Why not? It was not getting enough copper because I did not have a Mark II lift on it, which I also need to change up here. So that they can actually pull in the 66. Well, I forgot they were 66.67. So yeah, those were those needed to be Mark II lifts. That's okay. That wasn't actually really affecting too much of the of our build here. There we go. Okay, now we're balanced out. So the only other thing we'll have to hook up at some point is the actual truck line. It'll take these things instead of everything we're just throwing into an awesome sink right now. Look at that, we got our aluminum casings, we got batteries, we got conveyor belts. Or, <laughs> we have aluminum sheets on the conveyor belt, that's funny. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, I think that's gonna bring us, that's gonna bring us to the end of today's episode, the aluminum build. Um, next time I'll probably worry about, like, I might build the drone port in between episodes, I might save it for next episode. But that kind of sets us up for... Uh, moving forward in the game, I'm not 100% sure what factory or what projects to kind of take on next. Um, there's going to need to be some trains and some large amounts of materials flying around as we slowly start working our work, working our way towards the phase four um, space item elevator parts. Like I said, I don't know if we're actually going to get them done before 1.0 releases, but if we do, I'll be impressed. But yeah, if I, if I run into any more issues, I'll try and uh, throw it into a pinned comment down below. But thank you guys again so much for watching, for being here, for getting me past 500 subscribers. Um, hopefully I'll see you guys again in the next one. Other than that, I'll see you guys later.